everybody. Um, this was the column X and exercise, which I did with another class with my Wednesday class. Um, but I just wanted you to see, this is the color scheme we're working on today. So that's ultramarine, that's yellow ochre. And this is all the different combinations of mixing ultramarine with yellow ochre to get this palette. So I'll just leave that there for a second. It might be worth you actually making one of these. Um, you can just get a, a piece of card, separate it into different sections um seven or eight is a good idea and then just mix ultramarine and just start slowly adding yellow ochre until you get all the way up to pure yellow ochre okay. uh, and the nice thing about this is um, when you want to color match you can hold it right up against your palette and see what it would look like you know so it really helps you get the match so this is yellow ochre and ultramarine and you see it's just made a slightly darker ultramarine to to cast a bit of shadow under this wave. And then you can see the yellow ochre there. I added a lot of white, but it's still the same yellow ochre. So it's just kind of handy to have one of these strips. You could do it, you know, for each color combination, whenever you're starting a new painting and then you've always got it then as a record. I keep it in my box of paints. I've got a whole bunch of them. Okay, so colors, colors today, white, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. We are introducing, um, we might add, might add a little bit of pure yellow in this week as well. So cadmium yellow in this week. And then either paint gray or Mars black, whichever one you happen to have. Okay, so I think I mentioned last week, you're either going to need a very small brush, or you can cheat and use an ultra thin Sharpie, or a pencil, or a marker of some kind. So um, if you have an ultra thin Sharpie, in brown or black, then you can use that. Um, or you can use a pencil crayon in brown, uh, or you can use a very thin paintbrush if you have one. So I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna go get mine, then I'll ask you what, what you'll be using today. Um, okay, so let's start here. We're going to make a little cluster of grass. So um, I'm going to use my ultra thin Sharpie. So if you find it's not thin enough, you can use uh, a pencil and then go over it with a little bit of paint. It's just uh, going to, we are going to add a little bit of paint, but we're going to create the illusion that we've painted the whole thing ourselves. So um, I'm going to start by doing some short lines. I'm going to go in one direction to start with. And then I'm going to change direction. Is that in focus? Yeah. Is that in focus enough for everybody? So I'm kind of just going in two different directions. So I've kind of went to the right to start with. And then I'm going to go to the left and come back that way. And then as I come back, I'm going to make them a bit taller. And say so we are going to do a little bit of cheating today. 
So we're going to establish all these clusters with a Sharpie first, and then we're going to add paint to create the illusion that we painted the whole thing. <laughs> so it's just a little bit of cheating. I'm going to do a smaller cluster back here. Just a little, little ditty one. So we're just going to space out a few clusters as we get closer to the bottom of the canvas. We can make them a little bit bigger and bolder and then the this is where we're going to bring in some paint strokes in a minute as well. So I've done one, two, three clusters and then two smaller clusters. And then I'm going to do one big one on the right, kind of right into the corner. going to add paint to this. We're just using this to get the, the feathery grasses in the background. So we don't have to do all of these with a paintbrush. Are you using a black 
marker now or Sharpie? no just just it was running out so i just switched to another one. Oh, okay yeah it looks, it looks darker because the other one was just running out so i just switched it it was it was losing its ink this one is slightly thicker but the other one was running out We will switch over to paint when everybody's ready, but for now, we'll uh, take Is your this time. Too much, oh, Julie. Hold on, I just have to spotlight you so I can see. Hold on a second. For these grasses, we're going to use a little bit of everything. So we are going to put out yellow ochre so just a little bit of everything we're gonna yellow ochre ultramarine still the same palette we used before black or paints gray plus white Um, and the only additional one we're going to use now is cadmium yellow. Can everybody see my palette? Okay. So you want to either go with a the smallest round that you have or a fairly small flat. So whichever, whichever you have or enjoy using. And looking at our little color strip, I'm going to be mixing yellow ochre and ultramarine and can you see this color here which is it's not quite on the blue side of yellow ochre mixed with ultramarine can you see that it's about it's two steps above ultramarine so i've just added a little bit of yellow ochre to make it opaque and a bit greeny can everybody see that on the color strip and for those people not in my Oops to Awesome class on a Wednesday, if you want to make one of these in your own time, these are very handy, these strips. So I'm going to leave that strip out. I'm going to be using a flat brush. Does everybody have their colors out? Okay, so I'm going to be making this greeny color. So ultramarine blue with some yellow ochre. But we want it more on the blue side than the yellow side. There's some more ultramarine. So it's making ultramarine more of a green. I'm going to keep mixing until it looks close to this color. Let's see. I think that's, oh, I did it. That's not bad. I think that's a pretty close match, actually. If it disappears in, it's a pretty close match. I 
Yeah. So it's like a military green. <laughs> Okay, so once you've mixed it, take most of it off your brush. You don't want to have a, a loaded brush. You just want a little, little bit on your brush. So I've washed my brush, dampened it and smoothing it out. Just gonna put a little bit on the end. See how little I have on the end? just a little bit and then I'm just going to create a few where I've put some of these lines I'm just going to define a few not all of them and I'm going to concentrate the darkness at the bottom so you see how I just added to those lines I made with the sharpie Janice, can you see that? I think so. Yeah. The more Just, down at the sand and much. Yeah, so more down at the sand. And you don't need to go over all the lines you made, just a few of them. And it will be our secret that we used to Sharpie, OK? <laughs> well, anybody watching the video will know. Video watchers, it's our secret, okay? <laughs> Karen, how are you getting on? It was good winning? until I put paint on it. Sorry? It was good until I put paint on it. Oh. You can stick to Sharpies if you prefer. Just, you have to find a green one. And do you put it all the way up on the big ones? I'm only going to do a few. Um, I'm going to do sort of maybe three. Can't believe we're at the end of October already. And it is good on a day like today with this weather, it's so nice to be inside and painting. Exactly. Compared to beautiful days when you just want to be outside. I know.
Are we ready? So we're gonna add in some more colors within the same palette. So the next one we're gonna do, we're gonna add more ochre to our green mix. So we're gonna make it yellower. And on our strip, our color strip, um, we're aiming for this kind of number three. Can you see this one? So it's it's gone very much towards pure yellow ochre. It's just a little bit greeny. So it's a number three on this strip. And I'm just gonna add in a few more lines, kind of in between where I've gone, just a few. And this, these will be more towards the top of my little grass cl clusters. Anybody heard our Moira's getting on? Uh, I had a note from um, Debbie wants to join us, but she's um, she's going to wait for the next round. That's she was going to join this week, but she kind of got other things came up. Oops, I just had one of those moments, Karen, too much. <laughs> <laughs> Way blew it. Oh, you have an oops. Should have stopped. I, that's why I use my Q-tips very quickly. Oh. Oh, that's a good idea. It gets rid of the oopses almost yeah. instantaneously. Okay, I'm going to get some Q-tips. That's a good tip, Q-tip tip. Oops. <laughs> so funny when I hear, oops. <laughs> okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to quickly send everybody the right notes. For those people who didn't get it, I'll do it now. I don't know how I managed to do that with the send in the wrong notes out. Oh no, okay. So I did send it to the right group, Karen. Did you? Yeah. Because it said we had a power shortage and we didn't have a power shortage. I sent like it to the Oops to Awesome group. Wednesday. But we're not the oops to awesome group. 
So why were you in the Oops to Wilson group? <laughs> Oh, because I had originally signed up and I couldn't do both. Remember? Oh, that's why then. Right. So I didn't yeah, yeah, make yeah. a mistake. Okay. That's yeah, yeah. good. Do you want me to take you off that group then? Sure. Thank you. Oh, well, mystery solved. Because I was thinking, I'm sure. I, yeah. Okay. That's good. I didn't send it to the wrong group. Right. So now I'll check you all got the notes from. Because I, th I thought I was really organized last week. Okay, so I did do it right. So Karen, I'll take you off that groove. Okay, so I'm taking you off. Right, now I'm gonna go into the CFU group. Aha! I sent it. So Kathy, the email was sent at 2.55 on Wednesday the, the 20th with the notes and the video link. Okay. I'll the last double, week. I'll double check. Okay. So if for any reason you didn't get it, let me know and I'll check your email address against the group. Actually, I'll check it now. What, what email address are you under, Kathy? Is it kathleen.hall at gmail? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Yeah, Kathy, you're muted. Ka Kathy, can you unmute yourself? Oh, okay, yes. Um, I've got kathleen.hall at gmail, is that right? Yeah, but it's not Kathleen, it's Kathy Lean. Oh, Kathy Lean, yes. Yeah. K A T H Y L E E N. Correct. Dot hall at Gmail. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so you should have it then. Yeah. I'll, I'll okay. double check. I'll double check. Yeah. If not, maybe check your junk mail. So there you go. So I did get all the notes out. <laughs> they all went out and they all went to the right people. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Beautiful. Yay. <laughs> okay. So has everybody done that the uh number three yellow ochre now as the little highlights? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where it's gonna be a little bit more fine detail. I'm going to use my flat. What? Flat. Flat or flat or flat? Okay. So this time I'm using pure ochre, but just a tiny bit on the end of the brush. And I'm going to pick one of my little strands of grass. I'm going to start about two fingers down and I'm going to curve up. Oh. What color? What color this is just pure yellow ochre. We're going to add some white to it in a minute. Oh. So, oh, yeah. so we're just creating like some little, little grasses. Look, you know those fluffy bits when grass has gone to seed. So I'll show you this again. So curve up. It helps if you've got a brush that's small, but a little bit ratty, like this one. You know, one that's a bit separated. If not, you can dry it out with your fingers and then separate the bristles a little bit, or if you have a fan brush. Hmm. I've never had luck buying a fan brush I like, so I tend to wait until I've got a bit of a ratty old brush. So I'll show you again what I did. So I washed my brush. This is quite a small brush. I dry it rigorously on the paper towel. And then I do this. You see what I'm doing with my hand? Mm -hmm. um, to separate the bristles out. So the opposite of getting smooth lines, separate the bristles out. 
so it's a bit ratty so you're kind of making your own fan brush and then just dip the tip the very tip in your yellow ochre you only need a little bit that's the flat one but she's using what yellow Is yeah i'm just using yellow ochre yellow It's just creating an illusion of that grass that's kind of gone to seed a bit. And then all I'm doing is adding a little bit of white to it. So it's not a solid yellow ochre. Just gonna add a little bit of white towards the tip. So I'm adding white, mixing white and yellow ochre together on my palette. Just so that the, the tops show a little bit. Can you see that little tiny bit of, so it's just white with yellow ochre. How's everybody doing? Are we winning? Well. <laughs> Do we feel like we're winning? Got a little carried away.
finally put my heater in my art room today. Mm. That time of year again. Right. Which is weird because we started this program and I was still in my shorts. <laughs> My how things can change quickly in Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Let me know when you're ready for the next bit. So I'm writing our Christmas program. Well, our, our ah. winter program. I have got such cute winter scenes for you. I'm really excited to paint those. So what I'm gonna do is towards the end of this program, I'm gonna give you a set of the winter scenes I've designed and you can help choose which ones we're going to put into the CFU winter program. And because you're the Monday group, you can have first dibs on which ones we do and the rest will be used for paint nights. Ooh. So, so uh, what I will be doing is sending them out and you can do like a vote and we'll do a We'll pick four four paintings and you can do your first choice, second choice, third choice of and but there'll be a there'll probably be about 10 paintings to choose from. And then I'll pick the most popular ones and you can do them for your CFU. Ellie. That sound good? Yeah. You can and cherry I a, pick. <laughs> I and I have a feeling as the weather turns more, you know, colder, more people will be keen on just yeah. So my idea is we will be painting four scenes that we can photograph and use as our Christmas cards. Mm. So you'll be able to send out in December your paintings in card form as Christmas cards. And I'm gonna show you how to get them printed really cheap. Like, so you'll be able to get them all printed um, for $20 at Costco. Mm. And they even provide like gold lined envelopes too, which is pretty nice. Mm. And then you just get some cardstock to stick the photographs on. So I will also be including a little how to turn your paintings into Christmas cards, little lesson as an extra, I'll do it on a separate day because I think there'll be a whole bunch of people who wanna know how to make your own Christmas cards from some of my other classes. Are we ready for the next bit? Yes. Okay. I am. Is everybody okay. else ready? Kathy, Franca, Karen? Yeah, okay. So we're gonna take some pure yellow ochre and we're gonna put it, so establish where your light source is. So my light source is kind of coming pretty much directly down slightly towards, let's see. I'm looking at my light source. Everybody's gonna have sight. Yeah, kind of from slightly from the right hand corner directly down. So my shadow, I'm gonna pile my yellow ochre up underneath these little clusters. And I'm going to go slightly, slightly to the right. So this is just yellow ochre.
I'm like, and then, the wind is strong this afternoon. I know. Um, so I'm, once I've got in my pure yellow ochre, I'm then adding white to some yellow ochre. And I just want lots of color variations in the sand. So I don't want it to be a solid color. I want it to feel like there's lots of you know, lumps and bumps going on. And this is a great way if you've got any happy accidents you want to paint over at this point. If there's any grasses that you don't like. Yeah, is it really howling? Oh the my wind? God, yes. And the lake is just turning. It's wonderful. Karen, you can see it too. Oh, can you see the lake from your house? Yeah. Oh, you are so lucky. How can and you Karen see it? Too, but the white caps are amazing today. Wow, I can't believe you can see the lake from your house. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a good place to paint. Um, we've got, uh, my stepdaughter lives on the lake. She lives uh, near the lift bridge. Um, oh yeah. Like it's like a beach. Yeah. It's a really nice place. Are you, where about to you on, on Lake Shore? It's, um, I live in a little townhouse community that's south of Marine Drive, right at third line. Or oh, nice. Third line. So, yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's not right on, but I can see it from the front and the back. Wow. So yeah. lucky. Yeah. What a beautiful place to live. I couldn't afford right on, that's for sure. No, the prices have gone crazy. Well, it's not like yours, but I like it. It's a bit wild. <coughs> oh, I can't wait to see it. Can I have a look? So we're going to do some seagulls and sailboats. Are you up for the challenge? Sure. So we're creating the idea of sailboats and seagulls without the details. So um, it's just going to be a few little brush strokes and the, the mind is going to make up the rest. But I do want to add some white to my waves before I do that. So I'm just going to scoop up a little bit of pure white just because I feel like I needed two layers on the on the top so if you feel like your waves are white enough then don't worry about doing this but I feel like I needed to add some white to mine So Karen, can you see the lake from your house too? I'm in a condo, so I'm on the fifth floor and I, I can see the lake, yes. Oh, Pretty wow. Easy. Yeah. Gosh, what well, amazing well. painting inspiration. <laughs> How lucky. So Julie, what technique are you using to put that extra white on? You're just I'm just dabbing down. directly down. So I'm just dabbing because I, I want it to feel like a bit of spray coming up too. So I'm changing the direction of the brush and I'm dabbing. Do 
Julie, are you still using that same brush you were using on the beach? Yeah, I haven't changed my brush at all today. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm using this, uh, I think it's like a number four flat. My God, Julie, you can really make that come alive. <laughs> Thank like, you. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. You're That's so, amazing. You're so kind. Thank you. It's just a little bit of dabbing. It's yeah, right. I've been dabbing and it doesn't look like that. <laughs> That's for sure. Are we ready to do the birds? Or are we still working on the waves? Well, <clears throat> the waves are constantly changing. So <laughs> I guess anytime. Okay, so we'll do a few little sailing ships in the background, but they're gonna be very, very, very tiny. So I'm going to zoom in. Can everybody see my canvas? Yeah. Okay. So very small. And you can see how small I'm going to do these. I'm going to do a little line literally just oh that's not really showing up is it on the camera here we go can you see that now literally just a curve like a straight line with a bit of a curve they're very very tiny my pot one here Just to suggest a little distant boat, like really tiny. <laughs> I'm really not putting much effort in. I've just done a straight line with a bit of a curve and then a line underneath. So hopefully when I zoom out, dun, dun, dun. Got the feeling of some not sharks, but sailing ships. <laughs> and then um, the seagulls. I'm going to do one here. I'm going to do the age old little 
two curved lines. I'm going to put a small little blob and a little V there. And I'm going to make it a little bit thicker here. I want to create the illusion of a tiny bit of his um, tail feather there. And then to make it look a bit more seagully, I'm just going to put a little bit of black on the end. see my seagull <laughs> i'll do that a few times okay so i'll do another seagull so i'm going to show you again so i'm going to do one here so i'm going to do two curved lines with a little blob on one end. I'm going to make this thicker here by just dabbing. I'm not going for detail at all. Dab, 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 Create the illusion of a tail feather. Okay, then I'm going to bring in some black. And I'm just going to blob a little bit of that black underneath. And then I'll zoom out. Do they look like seagulls? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to do a few, a few other ones. But the other ones, I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm just going to do the little line, the two little curved lines.
Mm. How's it looking? Well, there are no seagulls. <laughs> on my horizon. But I'm happy. Yes. That's all I care about. Body. Just Yeah. I just want you to be happy. Yeah. I'm good. Oh, we didn't put the yellow in. I told you to put out yellow ochre, um, yellow cadmium yellow. That was what was missing. So we're mixing a bit of cadmium yellow just to brighten it up in a few spots. I knew there was something I'd forgotten. I'm just putting a little bit in the beach. Just a little bit in the beach and the sky. Just like a little zip here and there. Yeah, just a tiny bit here and there. You can even put a tiny bit in the waves if you want. Just kind of reflecting the sunlight in the waves. There we go. Good artist always signs their work, <laughs> which you can sign in Charlie.